Today is Rosa Parks Day, it's the anniversary of her birthday, and her action was about making sure that transit was available for everybody. It was about desegregating buses so that everybody could ride. And so I think that it's a great reminder as Transit Equity Day, that transit is really about access. It's about making sure that people can get to jobs, can get to work, can get to school. And so her legacy is one that's not only about desegregation, but it's also about economic access. There's this incredible 1950s bus behind me, similar to the one that Rosa Parks sat down and wouldn't move on. She was an inspiration that individual people can make a difference, that individual people as part of a whole can really change America. Public transit is really the backbone of making sure that our economy can grow. Whether it's bus or it's rail, it's really the way that we are able to move our lives. And so I think the vision for equity and transit is making sure transit's everywhere, making sure it's affordable, making sure that it goes to the places that we need it to go. Auburn Avenue was considered one of Atlanta's most famous streets, replete with successful Black-owned businesses, beautiful houses of worship, and an unparalleled nightlife. Sweet Auburn Historic District generated significant wealth prior to the Civil Rights Movement. A bustling thoroughfare, it was home to Atlanta Life Insurance Company and the nation's first successful Black newspaper, the Atlanta Daily World. Renowned artists like Miles Davis and Gladys Knight graced the stage of the Royal Peacock. Sunday mornings meant Big Bethel AME Church and the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church, where both Dr. Martin Luther King Sr. and Jr. delivered powerful sermons. Civil rights activist and businessman John Wesley Dobbs coined the area Sweet Auburn. Dubbed its unofficial mayor, he was the grandfather of Atlanta's first black mayor, Maynard Jackson. Sweet Auburn Historic District received a National Historic Landmark designation in 1976. Today is Transit Equity Day. It's a day that's recognized across the country to recognize how important public transportation is to the lives of people in our communities and that it's important to also support the people in our communities who rely on public transportation to get around. Today is also Rosa Parks' birthday, so this is a very important Transit Equity Day because of the inequities that were experienced on the public transportation systems in Montgomery, Alabama. It's a rainy day today. A lot of people who are trying to get to work are having to stand out in the rain waiting for a bus that might come 10 or 15 minutes later may come a little early and might disrupt their whole day. We need to make sure that people can get around safely. Having relied on public transportation myself for several years, having given up my car and commuting all the way up to Forsyth County from right here in Mechanicsville, I've seen the daily realities of so many of, of my neighbors, of my constituents, and I want to make sure that I can take that history, that legacy, as an inspiration to make sure we get better policy for everyone in the, across the city of Atlanta. Two, three. We're here because once again, Atlanta is making history. 
we have opened up Unity Place, the first in the nation, one of a kind housing for police recruits. So that's why we are here now. We are giving our recruits some place to stay actually in one of our most vibrant communities. As we talk about community policing, we must give the officer a chance and opportunity to get to know the community. Once you're on call, once you're, you're working, you really don't have that opportunity. But here now, at the beginning of their training, they have an opportunity to actually live amongst the neighbors, to actually live amongst the people that they will actually be protecting. So this is why it is very important. They're very excited about having the police officers in their neighborhood. First and foremost, it gives, it gives them a sense of security. And then once again, it also gives the neighborhood an opportunity to get to know the officer because it goes both ways. The neighborhood has to know the officer as well as the officer knowing the neighborhood. This is a catalyst with everything, you know, even with America being pioneers, we have shown and proven that this can work and will work. So now it gives other people the possibility to actually go off and do something different. Don't stop with the police. Don't stop with the police. We have firemen, we have teachers, we have public safety workers, I mean, um, public um, workers. So let's start this and let this be the catalyst for us moving forward, doing other great things throughout the city such as this. This is a great opportunity for the city of Atlanta. The stakes are very high. And today for me means the opportunity to immediately get to work on those things that are important to all of us. I am particularly excited about the fact that we have some existing members uh, who previously served. Uh, although I'm not new to the legislative process, I am new to city of Atlanta government. And so certainly I will be leaning on existing members for mentorship and guidance. I'm just thankful that the people of Atlanta have given me an opportunity to, to do work on behalf of the city. I'm looking forward to, to working with uh, my new colleagues. Um, some of them uh, have been friends of mine for a long time. Some of them are people who I've just met in the last few weeks, and I look forward to uh, doing wonderful things on behalf of the city of Atlanta. You know, I've been an advocate and an organizer fighting for uh, communities on one side uh, of, of you know, this, this kind of conversation, but I recognize that there are a lot of systems, a lot of processes, a lot of uh, uh, just, just knowledge that I have not been privy to that I look forward to being able to learn about the histories, the, the ideas, just the stories that really have made the city what it is. And I look forward to uh, learning from people who've been here for, for years or for decades in some cases. And I think it's important to, uh, to help bridge the gap between the old and the new, the past and the future. We have to have positive relationships and, and even potentially friendships to move our city forward. I am very much looking forward to working with uh, the experienced members on council. I've also reached out to several predecessors of mine in the role of Atlanta City Council President for advice as well. And so I'm looking forward to learning. I think this job is very much about learning, learning about the city, learning about what residents need and what they want and the ways in which we can help. And so I'm very excited to learn from, from all facets of council and the city. Uh, in order to try to do a great job in this role. You know, I think today really marks um, a crossroads for Atlanta uh, and a chance to collaborate on really big things. The mayor-elect, the council, we have a lot of things to do, but I think the spirit that in which we come at today is one of working together, of building bridges. I think that's what um, folks are looking for, and I'm excited to work in that way going forward.
Good morning. One moment. The uh, Monday, February 14th, uh, 2022 zoning committee meeting will begin shortly. Good morning, everyone. I am council member Marcy Collier Overstreet, your chair of the zoning committee. And I want to welcome everyone who has joined us on this Valentine's Day. Ms. Lindo, would you please do the roll call? Yes, Madam Chair. We have Council Member Matt Westmoreland. Council Member Byron Amos. Present. Council Member Andrea Booth. Council Member Amir Faroki. Here. Council Member Mary Norwood. Here. Council Member Howard Shook. Aye. Madam Chair, we do have a form of members present. We're missing Council Member Weston Present. That's Boo present. Thank you, Ms. Boone. Thanks for coming. Uh, so that's six council members here today. That's correct, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's move on to the adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt? to adopt the meeting agenda and a staff Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I'm sorry. If I can, may read the remote meeting statement? Yes, you may. Ms. Lindo, could you please read the remote meeting statement? Yes, good morning. Today's zoning committee meeting will be conducted remotely as advertised and in accordance with Georgia Code Section 50-14-1. The meeting will be conducted in conformance with Robert Wood's order and the rules of council as authorized by the city code. The public may access the meeting conference bridge toll-free by dialing 404-902-5066 and entering conference ID number 151945. This information was also provided on the Friday, February 11, 2022 public meeting notice. The public may also view the meeting on Channel 26, the council's homepage at citycouncil.atlanta.ga.gov, Facebook and Twitter pages at ATL Council and the council's YouTube channel. Today's meeting agenda was also published and made available on Friday, February 11th, via the city's website at atlantacityga.iqn2.com. In addition, the public is able to submit comments unrelated to zoning items that have or will go before the zoning review board via voice notes at 404-330-6035 yesterday between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. These comments will be played during the public comment portion of this meeting. All persons present on our council meeting conference bridge are requested to please mute your phones and speakers. Meeting participants wishing to speak must be acknowledged by the committee chair. Thank you all in advance for your cooperation. Thank you for that. Um, so now we are moving on to the adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to, adju to adopt the meeting uh, agenda? And a second, please. So moved for a second, Byron. Thank you. Moved by Councilmember Faroki, second by Councilmember Amos. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open, Madam Chair. Vote is closed. At six days, zero nays. The meeting agenda has been adopted. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes? And I'll, a second also, please. To move for rookie. Second, Amos. Motion by. Okay, motion by Faroki, second by Amos. Please vote. Vote is closed, Madam Chair. That's six years, zero nays. The meeting minutes have been approved. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on down to um, the 2022 Zoning Committee Goals and Objectives. So a draft of the list of 2022 Goals and Objectives uh, was emailed out to the members on Friday and again this morning. So hopefully everyone has had a chance to review those. And if there are no changes... I'll give you guys a moment if you'd like to speak or if there are 
um, an item that you'd like to change, this is the time to speak. Okay, hearing none, I motion to adopt the 2022 zoning committee goals and objectives. Can we please prepare the vote? Second, Faroki. Second, by Faroki. Thank you. One moment, Madam Chair. Okay. One moment. The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? I'm having technical difficulties by vote yay. Thank you. The vote is closed, Madam Chair. That's six zero nine. The twenty two the twenty twenty two golden objectives have been adopted. Yay. All right, thank you. So now we're gonna move on to the public comment. Ms. Lindo, could you please play the public comment? And yes, how many do we Yes, Madam Chair. And just please be advised that we did receive 23 comments, but we could only play two because the remainder of the comments were related to an item on the zoning agenda, which is item number 16. Thank you. Thank you. A special greeting to you, the voters of Atlanta, keeping an eye on government. Then, how will senior advocates of the policy analyst? Relative to items two on the agenda, 22 5221, kudos to the bank to civic engagement, even as he is four months away from becoming an octogenarian. That background of his that Nicholas planning unit team will come in handy for him. The Board of Zoning Development, DCA, has risen in prominence folks. Some community members are challenging a decision by the zoning department to issue a special administrative permit for construction of a gas station within the proximity of the station house of worship. They are challenging the zoning department to sit on radio and media. It's going to take a person with keen acumen to get past the rhetoric and inspect the documentation. For example, if that's some claim verbally, Neighborhood led units are voted to oppose the decision of the zoning department. Jones, the date, time, and place of that NPUR meeting, and where are the minutes that show how neighborhood planning units are that you voted? It is said, talking cheap. But talk that is allowed to fester, proof can be costly in the long run. I am Brother Anthony Okone, a soul for spiritual being, having a human experience. And I call on you members of this community, don't, to hear my words. I have given. 
giving up the will to know religion. My name is Brother Anton Muhammad, but I turn to my ancient ancestor. Oh, for spiritual energy. We all are energy, 99.99% energy, less than 1% matter. So I ask you the number that is committed, John. The man has already proposed on his campaign 20,000 affordable houses. So I ask you numbers of this Tony committee. Let's be transparent and support the man. My Caucasian friends and members of this committee that look like Brother Muhammad and his view. We are cultural people that work from the right side of the brain. Holistic. We're not so rational. We're not so this father the one with the most education, the most money. We for what is good for the whole of humanity. As it was in 1948 when we created the state of the Jewish people, they named Caucasian. But I ask you, we can continue as America to give $50 billion just in support of their state socialist and not militarily. It's even more. So I ask you to find ways to help the matter fix to this, to take them, put it up businesses. Go to those buildings, let them work them immediately to house women and children, seniors. And as you already know, the crime is rapid in Atlanta. Let's find a way to help them young men have trade. We can teach them how to renovate them houses with contractors, have on the job training. Let's be creative in the 21st century, the courageous age, the age to work together. For the benefit of changing the conditions, changing the conditions of poor people. So I ask you, members of the Zoning Committee, let's be creative and support the now with 20,000 affordable houses. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Look, Mr. Dixon said he wants 20,000 rock at nature at hotel. I said, I'm going to make brother Anthony Mohammed. That concludes the public comments, Madam Chair. And I just wanted to mention that we also have with us Ms. Kieta Holmes, the Director of the Office of Zoning and Development. Thank you. Welcome, uh, Ms. Holmes. Um, so we're going to move on down to communications. Um, we'll start with number one, a communications from Council Members Dustin Hillis, District 9, Andrea L. Boone, District 10, and Keisha S. Waite. Post three at large, appointing Mr. Kenneth Hill to serve as a member of the Zoning Review Board. This appointment is for a term of two years. I think we have Mr. Hill on the line if he'd like to speak about why he'd like to serve in this capacity. Is he there? Madam Chair, according to our staff, he is not yet on the line. Perhaps we can take number two and we'll come back to Miranda. Okay, we'll go on down to communications number two. A communication from Council Members Dustin Hillen, Hillis, District 9, Andrea L. Boone, District 10, Marcy Collier Overstreet, District 11, Antonio Lewis, District 12, and Keisha Sean Waits, Post 3 at large, reappointing Mr. Mac Carmack. Carmack to serve as a member of the Board of Zoning Adjustment. This appointment is for a term of two years to begin retroactively to February 4th, 2021 and to expire February 3rd, 2023. Is Mr. Kamak on the phone to speak about why he'd like to continue his service? Uh Yes, ma'am. I'm uh, hearing you loud and clear. Uh, I wonder hear you too. Thanks for okay. joining the Zone Committee today, and we'd like to hear from you about this position. Yes, I've um, uh, served on the uh, BCA now 
for a uh, several years, and I have found this uh, uh, rewarding, and I believe uh, I am making some uh, sort of worthwhile uh, contribution to the general welfare of the neighbourhoods involved with the various applicants' uh, requests for zoning. Uh, I uh, have found the uh, position not only rewarding, but I have found it uh, quite informative uh, when it comes to various situations that uh, seriously affect the quality of life of the citizens going forward. And I've been particularly interested in some of the situations where new construction is involved, where I feel like the developers don't appreciate the importance of some of those developments in terms of the long-term situation for the benefit of the citizens. And uh, I think they are somewhat shocked when you uh, uh, make a statement to them that uh, do they realize people will need to live in these establishments for probably in excess of 80, 90 years, and uh, many of the people living in there probably still aren't already born. So uh, that is something that uh, the responsibility weighs heavily on. Um, uh, I personally feel very strongly about uh, because I, I don't want to leave a legacy of negativism uh, with such a situation. Um, if any council members have any questions for me, I would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you for for um, for coming today and giving us that information. I don't see any speakers in line, but uh, council members, if you would like to, uh, to ask questions or uh, just make a comment, just chime right in. I would like to move approval. Boom. Oh, wonderful. Um, and I'll second that. So we have approval by Council Member Boom, second by Overstreet. Can we please prepare the vote? The vote is open, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilmember Amos, how do you vote? I vote yay. Thank you. The vote is closed at 68. There are names that are unstable. Mr. Kamak, thank you so much. Um, and uh, this will move on to our full council, our next full council meeting. Um, and you do not have to uh, call in there. Uh, but we'll be in touch with you soon about your uh, service, how to, get, how to continue serving. Okay? Thank you for coming today. Thank you very much. Is Mr. Hill on the line yet? Madam Chair, he is not on the line. We did reach out to him just to make sure if he was having trouble. So um, if we can move on to that. Ms. Corrine Lindo, Mr. Hill is on hold. He is on hold at the moment. Well, we'll just wait a, we'll wait a moment. He's saying that all he can hear is music right now. Can someone let us to heal in? Madam Chair, if I would, I would like to speak on behalf of Mr. Kenneth D. Hill, who is a dedicated and diligent servant to the city of Atlanta. He has worked on so many various projects, including those in the Adamsville community. And I would just hope that we would 
uh, move approval on his appointment to the ZRB and allow him to speak next meeting. So I would like to move approval. Okay, and I'm going to second that, uh, Councilmember Boone. Um, I've noticed his work in the community as well. Thank you very much for uh, giving those um, comments about Mr. Hill's service. Thank you. Can I move approval? Yeah, he can actually come and speak um, at our council meeting, the next one. It'll be fine. So that's a motion by Boone, second by Overstreet. Can we please prepare the vote? One moment, Madam Chair. Vote is open. Council Member Amos, how do you vote? I vote yes. Thank you. The vote is closed. That's 6-0 zero nays. This item is favorable. Okay, uh, so now we're down to ordinance for first read. We have eight first reads, and these will be sounded in at our next full council meeting on February 21st and referred at that time. So no action is needed there. We're going to move on to ordinance for second read. Madam Chair, if I may, Mr. Hill is on, was able to get on the line now, um, if you'd like to hear from him. Yeah, this is a good time, right before we move on. Uh, Mr. Hill? Yes. Can you hear me, Madam Chair? Yes, yeah, so we just voted uh, to have you uh, serve on the, let me make sure I get this position correct, because we moved, to serve on the zoning review board uh for two years and it was favorable so it's moving on to our full council uh to to be ratified so thank you so much for stepping up uh, to serve the city of atlanta in this capacity you want to speak just a little bit about why you'd like to do so absolutely and thank you madam chair and i appreciate the support of uh council members dustin hillis andrea boone and keisha wade Brown in the community uh, spans over 30 years uh, and I've worked uh, in the corporate sector with the Home Depot uh, all over Atlanta and I've seen the growth. Uh, I reside in uh, southwest Atlanta where I serve currently here for both. Uh -huh. uh, I have also the opportunity to as well as, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. As well as a uh, nonprofit leader for uh, affordable housing. And so it is definitely my passion to ensure that we are building communities holistically and that we are uh, managing density for our growth uh, and also considering the voices of our community. So I appreciate this opportunity uh, and I look forward to serving the city. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And um, because you came today, you do not have to come to uh, full council on February 21st. Um, and we'll be in contact with you about your uh, the ways that you're supposed to uh, show up and serve. So thank you very much for, for calling in this morning. Thank you, Madam Chair. All righty. Um, so now we're going to move on down to ordinance for second read. We are... Um, ready Ms. Holmes we're ready to uh, do our ordinance for second read we'll take item 12 number 12 first and then we'll come back and take the items 11 through 15 and then back and, and 17 as a block if that's possible if that's okay yes ma'am good morning <clears throat> yes ma'am good morning council members item good number morning. 12 
220150Z2166, an ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from single family residential belt line overlay to multi family multi unit belt line overlay for property located at 1101 Church Street Northwest. Staff and ZRB recommendation approval, MP recommendation denial. Okay, so I motion to approve. As amended. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. No, just motion to approve. Second. second by okay, motion by Overstreet, second by Boom. Please declare the vote. The vote is open, Madam Chair. The vote is closed at 68 zero nine. That item is favorable. Item number 11, 2201009, D21102, an ordinance by Council Member Amir Arfaroki is amended by Zoning Committee to rezone from two family residential Beltline overlay to mix residential commercial conditional Beltline overlay for property located at 495 North Avenue, 495 North Avenue rear. Staff recommendation approval, NPU and DRB recommendation approval conditional. Item number 13, 2201052, Z2161, an amended ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from two family residential Beltline overlay to multi family residential Beltline overlay for property located at 525 Langhorn Street, Southwest. Staff recommendation denial, MP recommendation approval conditional, ZRB recommendation approval conditional. Item number 22. I'm sorry, item number 14, 220-1053, D2164, an amended ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from mixed residential commercial to community business district for property located at 557 Westlake Avenue, Northwest, staff, MPU, and ZRB recommendation approval. Item number 15, 220-1055, D2176, an amended ordinance by zoning committee to rezone for residential limited commercial conditional and single family residential to plan development housing for property located at 314, 320, and 324 West Bayuga Road and 361 Valley Brook Drive, Northeast, staff, ZRB, and MP recommendation approval conditional. And item number 17, 220-1062, U2132, an amended ordinance by zoning committee for social use permit for recovered materials for processing facilities. Plant pursuant to 1606 0051Q for property located at 1484 Industrial Way Northwest. Staff and CRB recommendation approval conditional MP recommendation approval. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. Okay, so all of these items are recommended for approval. So I move approval. Is there a second? Second, boom. Uh, motion to approve by Overstreet, second by Boom. Please prepare the vote. Vote is open, Madam Chair. At six days, zero days, these items will be favorable as amended. Item number 16, 220-1056, D2180, an amended ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from two-family residential home park special public interest district to mixed residential commercial conditional home park special public interest district for property located at 559 10th Street, 565 10th Street, and 569 10th Street, and 997 Curran Street. Staff and ZRB recommendation approval conditional, MP recommendation denial, and the request is to hold to the, the um, Community Development and Human Services public meeting. Okay, so motion to hold. Is there a second? Second, boom. Um, motion by Overstreet, second by boom. Please have the vote. Vote is open, Madam Chair. Everyone, please vote. The vote is closed. That's 68 zero names. That item will be held. 
Item number 18-220-1051, Z2158, a substitute ordinance by zoning committee to rezone from light industrial to multifamily residential conditional for property located at 1056, 1066, 1088, and 1100 Murphy Avenue Southwest and 1127 Silver Road and 1135 Silver Road. Staff, NCU and ZRB recommendation approval conditional. Okay, um, so I, uh, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second, boom. Okay, move to approve as substituted. Motion by Overstreet, second by Boom. Is there, um, oh, please prepare to vote. The vote is open, Madam Chair. Those closed at six days zero names. This, these items are favorable as substituted. And item number 19, 220-1061, U2111, an ordinance by zoning committee for a special use permit for outdoor displays or sales areas pursuant to 1632-0072A for property located at 1318 Silver Road. Staff and MPU recommendation denial, ZRB recommendation is filed. Okay, um, well, I'm going to motion to file. Is there a second? Second, boom. Motion by Overstreet, second by Boom. Please prepare the vote. The vote is open, Madam Chair. The vote is closed. That's Excuse their name. This item will be filed. All right, and I think that takes care of those legislative items. Is that correct, Ms. Holmes? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so let's move on down to papers held in committee. We have not removed. So that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, does anyone have any, any council members have anything you'd like to uh, discuss before we go? Okay, hearing none, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming to our zoning committee today, and this brings us to adjournment. So we are adjourned.